Awesome, man. A long time coming, man. How long have we been talking about long doing this? Long time coming, bro. Since at least the start of the year. Uh, at least. At least. I think it's more than that. Yeah. I think it's more than that. How's it been? How's it going? How's the channel? Oh, bro. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a crazy, like, 10 months for full send MMA, man. Between <laughs> everything that's happened with us, you know, we kind of started out a little rocky you know everybody kind of knew us from uh, i remember right like the, <laughs> you guys really got into the public eye with the uh meltdown of uh, luke hawkhold or was it before no, the, it was, was it the was, nate diaz was thing the, it was the nate diaz <laughs> incident bro oh, uh, shit. you know the mma community is a very small world and <laughs> even though I, even though I was just a fan at that point, bro, I wasn't even a journalist or nothing at that point. My uh, my internet memes made the rounds. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Tell tell that story. I'll I, right, I'll, I'll put right. the so I'll have the link. It's it's on your channel, right? Yeah, it should be there. Yeah. yeah, I'll put the link on the on the description here. Yeah, it's hilarious. I I I never seen that one. I saw the the Lucky Hawkhold one. Yeah, so originally i wasn't even a journalist or nothing i was just a fan of mma and i was thinking how i could just somehow make my way into the sport so i just made an instagram account and i was just active in the comment sections and then i was pretty good at internet memes at the time so i started making <laughs> a couple of internet memes but like I said, I wasn't even, I wasn't hired by anybody. I was literally just a fan sitting at home watching MMA, right? And uh, one, of, one of Nate Diaz's teammates was fighting one of my homies at the time. And uh, he beat him. And naturally, when you're a fan of something and your team gets beat, you get a little sad. You get about upset, it. yeah, of so, course. So... Yeah, I, I made a couple of memes about one of <laughs> Nate Diaz's teammates. And uh, it's funny because the bigger I got, the more followers I got. Everybody was like, you know, these, these could come back to haunt you one day. Oh, like, yeah. you know, people are going to see this. And I'm like, bro, anything I put on the internet is, if I put it out there, people have the right to, to be like, you know what, that's not that funny. Or you know what? Hey, you talk some shit, so you, you you got this coming, right? So, I mean, yeah, that whole thing, that whole everybody's seen it, the whole world fucking seen it. Hey, man, you need to watch your tweets about my boy. Smack the mic, smack me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I, I'll own up to that. I absolutely, you know what I mean? I have no ill will towards Nate Diaz <laughs> shit. I, I had it coming, bro, you know? You make some jokes, you gotta... You gotta suck it bro, up to you gotta face music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... And it's funny because I talked to, I've done a couple interviews with Jake Shields. I haven't seen Nate and the team since, but I've done a couple interviews with Jake Shields, who's like part of the scrap pack and like super close with Nate and stuff. And Jake Shields was like, look, bro, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now if you had handled that situation differently. He's like, you were cool about it. You were like, Yo, yeah, I, I talked some shit, you know, and it is what it is. So. Yeah, what are you gonna do too? Like, it's like I said, right? It's like, listen. I know, and, and it's also an idea, so of course, it's, of course. Uh, you gotta take that in consideration, right? No, and I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm a fan of those guys, bro. I grew up watching them do like, you know, the brawl in Nashville where they storm the cage and yeah. stuff like that with yeah. Mayhem Miller and like Nick Diaz was fighting Takanori Gomi when he was allegedly stoned. You know, was, <laughs> I fucking love watching those guys fight, bro. Oh. Oh, shit. You want to introduce your brother right here in the back? Yeah, so this is my guy behind me. This is my cameraman. Nobody gets to see him that often because he's always recording, but this is uh, this is Steven, and uh, man, he's been riding with me for, I think we first brought him on the weekend of the John Jones and Cyril Gone fight, so his oh, first, wow. his first, his first Holy week of the job shit. was the week of John Jones's return, so it was like, okay, bro, it was kind of like what happened with me. Like, I was working a construction job. I got a call from the Nelk boys, and within two days, they're like, hey, we're going to throw you on 
the red carpet for the UFC Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. To interview fighters. So for him, it was like, hey, bro, you're hired, and uh, we're going to need you to film for John Jones' return to UFC this Fight is Week. crazy. Yeah. yeah, bro, pretty this fucking wild. This is wild. crazy. And all those beautiful pictures and uh that that's crispy Bro, that fucking all this guy, gorgeous man. gorgeous gorgeous guy i posted on uh mma usg all the time you send me a bunch of videos i'm so thankful for that and it's so good and sharp and crispy it's gorgeous it's fucking it's fucking gorgeous so even the guy from the ufc was talking about that today right yeah. it's like oh every time i see you guys footage it's it's always so nice it's like no way i was like holy shit. i sat down with him today i was like you gotta show me what you have and i'm i'm copying it <laughs> yeah, camera does the work yeah. it's it's fucking awesome it's fu so you you're always a fan how did this uh nelk boys thing started with with you especially like yeah so with me um the nelk boys have obviously always been fans of the ufc and i think the the video that really blew them up was when they were on fight island and kyle went up and was like t something along the lines of like you know jorge masvidal's been hitting on my girlfriend and he's talking to khabib about this and he's like do you think i could take him and khabib oh that's like, him yeah. holy shit i seen that yeah. i had no idea it was him yeah, so that was our guys that was kyle oh shit and but was it was it that was like a like a sketch or was it serious no, fucking up fucking around was, so i mean obviously the story's made up of course but khabib didn't know right no khabib didn't oh know. shit yeah 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 that was that video is so fucking funny yeah, so that blew up everything Everywhere, and I think that kind of made everybody know about the Nelk boys and them getting involved in okay. it, right? And uh, so they're super close with Dana White. And last year they put out something on their Instagram, uh, Instagram and Twitter, and I think even on YouTube. And it was like, look, we're we're looking for a full-time uh, MMA journalist. They're going to go to all the fights. They're going to be interviewing the fighters, uh, and they're going to be like representing our brand and run it, basically running full send MMA mm -hmm. um, and they wanted people to apply so you had to DM them or tweet them or whatever submit a video of you basically explaining why you should be the guy to you know run full send MMA and I had had a pretty good following at the time I had about 40,000 Instagram followers mm -hmm. um, and I was working for bare knuckle FC at the time I was doing their post fight interviews as well and um, I just, it was actually my little cousin, he shot me a DM and was like, yo, like they just, the Nelk boys just posted this, you should fucking apply for this. And uh, and I was like, you know what, like, let's go with it, you know? So I made a little clip and I, I sent it to, I think, Kyle. And within that same day, he was like, hey, bro, do you have Twitter? Can you tweet it at me? And I didn't have Twitter at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I just had Instagram so I sent it to him that way and he ended up posting it on Twitter and on Instagram and it kind of like your video yeah at saying why you saying should, be, why there. I should okay. be there yeah like like nominating myself type thing and then eventually what happened he got all the people that wanted to apply in and they had their fans kind of vote holy on, shit okay who should be the next guy or who should be the guy to okay. take over full send MMA wow and so it was a combination of their fans that's awesome but it's fucked up at the same time right like because like you're really fucking good at it but sometimes people just exactly. like the other guy better exactly. they'll never yeah. get a chance to see it exactly so it was it was my fans and his fans were voting and luckily i was the one chosen which was pretty fucking crazy um i think it was me and there was another guy who goes by the name of brawler bible shout out to brawler bible he's a young kid uh, I think he's he's either 19 or 20. He's going to be coming up in the scene pretty soon, mm -hmm. too. It was between me and him, but I think the thing is, is you have to be 21 to get into the UFC oh, events. Okay. So that kind of automatically knocked him out because he was too young at the yeah. time. Um, but yeah, man. So I, I didn't hear anything from them for a while because me and him were the top two voters, but we didn't hear anything. So I had reached out to Kyle and was like, Hey bro, um, I'm working for Bare Knuckle, but I was thinking about going to International Fight Week last year. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you guys gonna be there? Like maybe we can link up, you know, talk about this full send MMA thing. Um, and then he ends up messaging me back and he goes, yeah, I think we're gonna go, are you gonna come down? And 
I had just finished a bare knuckle gig in Florida and I was kind of tight on money and I was like, shit, bro, I just finished up in Miami. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make fight week. And he's like, hold up, I'm going to call you. So out of nowhere, I just finished a shift. I was working as a carpenter at the time. I'm in my work clothes and he calls me. He's like, hey, bro, fuck it. You're the guy. Do you nice. want to come to International Fight Week? We can fly you out in the next two days. And I was like, yes. Nice. 100% I'm your guy. Yeah, let me feel. Yeah. yeah. 100% <laughs> I'm your guy. I drove right back around to my job. I told him I quit. And that was it, bro. It was nice. Fucking man. wild. Yeah. That is wild. Yeah. That is so wild. And it's it's nice because it, it, it worked out too, right? Because I think when you get this level of involvement that you you at like traveling every week and and just i i asked you like a, a couple of uh, months ago so where do you live it's like really nowhere yeah. <laughs> i'm like oh wow that's fucking it's not for everyone yeah and you really really gotta love this shit or you won't fucking you know uh, yeah it's gotta be your number one priority yeah and like, and like steven steven's coming to find that out as well because like um, I was on the road for a good like six months before he joined me. We had uh, some of the Nelk guys that were helping me film and then he got hired full time. And now he's he's getting to find out how hectic the traveling schedule is as well. I was kind of, I was making fun of him when we were in London earlier this year because he kept falling asleep on me on the ride. Wow. Hey, I, was, I was not sleeping in London. I slept like four hours every night just exploring, like seeing. Wow. It's so dope just to see all these places too. Yeah. So like you get to do, you get to travel too and and, and, and hang around and, and, and get to know the places. It's got to be pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. You gotta be pretty awesome. I mean, I'm in a like the same but different uh, vibe at the same time. You know, like I have my own channel, and and I, I it took me like almost two years to get the the UFC credentials approved yeah. because it's it's kind of like what you do. We don't see it around. It's like, hey, so tell me, uh, what's the future? You know, it's like, how is your training care? That's not what we do. Yeah. And I, I think it's very slowly. I, I even made a, a, a Instagram story the other day because someone asked me because it's okay, you're not you're not going to those uh, UFC events as often anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, it's it, it's tough because I'm not a traditional media type of guys. And I say, but it's 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 happening slowly and then i i i i put you guys there as a as an example did i say they starting something much more powerful than 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 me because you you have that that the nelk boys machine in the yeah. back and that's yeah. awesome because we need that right like we don't we don't need just those same fucking and i'm not cheating on these guys i i, I say look there's there's four or five guys, the the MMA fighting guys and the Mac Life guys, Diego. They are awesome and they fucking huge and but that's not what we do, right? Like we're different, we're different, and I I I love that we are getting there and opening that little door and just crawling in and say, look, we we're doing this shit too, and it, it, it adds a different value to it because. The, the, I, I hate to say it, and I don't want to sound negative, but the, the, this traditional media format is dying. It's like it's, it, it is dying. It's there's, like, there's only, like you said, there's only so many people that can do the traditional way. Like you're always gonna have to have it. You're always it's, gonna have it's to have that, it. but not. 30 asking the same exactly. fucking questions, right? Exactly. It's like a, I had Gilbert Burns one day. He said, "Look, if I could." know the sequence of the questions i could pre-record everything and just hit play when the, the 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 interview starts because the questions are always the same always the same nothing changes it's just oh so what's next and uh, and uh hey how's the training camp what answer do you expect when you ask the guy something like that it's like hey uh how was oh man it sucked I'm injured. I'm here just for the money. It's, it's never gonna happen. I was fucking around with Glover once, just just playing around there because he was complaining about it, and everybody does. But it's that silent pain, you know, like nobody talks about it. And I think 
in a few years, well, there's that girl too. I don't know her name. What's uh, what's her Nina. Nina. Yeah. She's doing something very cool too. And you you can do something. And then Shmoles. So we we get in there, <laughs> right? Yeah. Shmo is a journalist yeah. though, like a like a like a with a degree and shit. That, you are? No. Yeah, I'm, and me neither. No. And and but we we get in our our way, right? Because. Even though you have the, the Nelk Boys uh, thing going on, if you sucked at it, you wouldn't be here. That's it. They can only the Nelk push can only get us so far. Like we're gonna get the, we're gonna get some support from the Nelk fans. No at the beginning, what. and that's at it. The beginning. Say, hey, you got this. Yeah. That's it. Take it. But if we didn't work, yeah, you out. If we didn't know anything about MMA, our numbers would not be where they're at right yeah you know what i mean like yep. we I, I tell people all this you know i tell people this all the time like when you're first starting out you shouldn't worry about your numbers um you should just be more focused on your content and loving the content that you make but with us being the brand and having the backing that we have like there is a little bit of a certain expectation for us mm -hmm. to have some numbers and i mean in 10 months uh, we've been able to rack up 140,000 on Instagram, about 125,000 on TikTok, and we're closing in on 100,000 on YouTube. That's within, awesome. Within 10 months of doing this. That's so, crazy. So it's, if we those are crazy for MMA, it's, it's crazy. That's what I'm numbers. saying. You know, like, because you don't want to like. 10 million followers that don't engage with you. Mm -hmm. You need those guys commenting and engaging, and it's MMA guys. So yeah. it's 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 it, those are huge numbers. Yeah, those are huge numbers. Yeah. So cool, man. So cool. So what was your crazy uh, fight week story? Did you do you have like a because what you do? Yeah. It's like besides like getting slapped by Nate Diaz and and shit. Because that's 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 crazy enough. But like. Like shit hit the fan, you, something happened. Yeah, I'm sure you have something. Oh man! When our hotel blew up in Miami. Oh <laughs> shit! What? Yeah, yeah we landed bro. it. Well, I was in Miami. Like just now for the Adesanya? Yeah, yeah, you had to. Yeah, be. that was Adesanya week. Yeah, Stephen, Stephen got there before me, so he can tell you what happened. Yeah, so I dropped my shit in the hotel room, like my uh, my suitcase, luggage, everything. I was like getting ready. Dropped my stuff, uh, went to a friend's, uh, actually I went to the Marlins game, and then I went to a friend's uh, apartment, and he, uh -huh. ha he happened to live right next to our hotel. So I was chilling in my friend's apartment, we heard this like, bang, like it sounded like thunder. We looked outside and it was fine, but I guess there was an explosion, and a transformer exploded in our hotel wow. right next to us. It was like two transformers. There was like glass and stuff all over the street. Holy shit. Like it just shit. blew up. There were people like, there was blood literally on the floor of the hotel. Like, blood? Yeah. So like people got was fucked bleeding, up? Like, oh, wow. From the explosion, like a construction worker. I don't know what happened. Holy shit, man. So then OG gets in, like his flight was delayed. I don't know what happened with you. Like you had to catch another flight to yeah. like from Buffalo to... Yeah, I got in super late. I was traveling from like Rochester or something. And yeah, and it was like literally right up. when he got there. Yeah. I texted him. I was like, yo, our, our hotel just blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the hotel that we were supposed oh, to stay in, and I'm shit. I'm going on Twitter, and it was it, yeah, it was downtown Brickle, and Twitter's like mm -hmm. something not good just happened in Brickle, and I was wow. like, holy shit! And I, then, I didn't even hear about this. Yeah, so I was trying to go see him because I got dropped off by an Uber, and uh, I had my suitcase, and there's the cops are blocking off the road, and I'm standing there with my fucking suitcase. I'm like, so. My hotel just blew up, and my guy's in there. <laughs> like, what, what am I supposed to do here? They're like, well, we're not going to let you in because there's power lines down, and fucking that could kill you. So <laughs> we, I had to call our manager and be wow. like, I'm not, like, imagine making that phone call to your manager, being like, so uh, we need a new hotel because I was just... <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, man. When I went back to get my stuff, they're like, go in at your own risk. Yeah. And that's when I saw the blood. I felt like I was in the Titanic. Like, crazy, man. That's yeah. crazy. I was like, this, is this going to blow up again? Like, And you know what the, the weird part for me, I just remember this now, was I got out at this gas station. I hopped out of my Uber, and there was a white Bentley at this gas station. And a guy's filling up gas in his Bentley. It was fucking Jamie Foxx. 
No way. Jamie Foxx is there <laughs> on the same street as me with his Bentley, and now, like, you look at Jamie Foxx, and nobody knows what ha what's happening to him. You guys can go. You guys can go. So that was that was super weird to think about that I saw Jamie Foxx, and now, like, two months later, he's... Nobody knows if he's even alive, bro. It's that's crazy, crazy man. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I, that scene, and the whole scene in Miami, I, I just not just not for me, you know? It's like... Did you got the vibe? Did you did you walk around and uh, I love it, man. He loves do it. you really? It's like I, 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 oh no, with the I, beach. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's just like the faces and all the you know. It's like I, I think they put this here. They closed their drive-through. No way. Yeah. Is it closed? We could try. No, it's just so we no, don't do I think this. It's for like the land. Oh, okay. It's just so we don't do exactly what we're trying to do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna do that. And Miami was crazy though. That week was wild. I just don't don't I, I just think it's so fake. You know, like the 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 Ferraris and 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 like cool faces, you know, it's like oh I'm so cool. I'm in Miami beach. And you're right, it's a I lot of people a, trying to show off. Right, like I, that's it's such a weird vibe. What do you got? I'm okay, bro. You're not gonna get a coffee? I know he wants a coffee. But I'll, you get a coffee I'll too. Get the jitters, bro. Starbucks, uh -huh. Water. Water. What? Um, All right, I'll have a Trent iced coffee, extra cream, no sugar. You said Trent iced coffee, extra cream, no sugar? Yes. Gotcha. There's one more. Oh, let's get a grande soy latte, please. I'm sorry, can you repeat that for me? A grande soy latte. Grande soy latte, do you want that hot or ice? Ice, please. Grande ice soy latte, okay. And uh, just a water, like a bottle. Awesome, it's going to be 11.18 for y'all. All right, thank you. Thank you. Soy boy. Soy boy. Did, was know, it? Do you know what soy boy means? No. Big soy boy. Soy boy is like a term, it's like a slang term for like somebody that's soft. Oh, really? Or that has low testosterone. Yeah, soy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I had, just today, I saw it on YouTube, a uh, comment on that, um, on that, I did, I did one of those with uh, Alex. Yeah. And I stopped it. Starbucks, I order a car, and, and he's like full, like, poor mode, right? Like, he's talking about mind games, and, and he's like, just got his face going, so I stop at the coffee, he's like, and I was like, all right, uh, iced coffee, you say, what do you want? He's like, I'll have a caramel frappuccino with extra <laughs> whipped cream. <laughs> the guy, the guy, the comment was fucking oh priceless. God. I'm trying oh, to, on, man. so, he's such a great dude, too, man. <laughs> I want to try it's to. Like fuck it, I'm moving up weight class. Like, yeah. No, out. the guy said the drama. It's in the f in the caramel frappuccino <laughs> or something like that. It's so funny. <laughs> the toughest guy, and he orders like the the girliest drink, you know. Yeah, that was it. You see, hold on. Let me see if I find it. It's it's priceless. It's right here. The caramel frappuccino is where the real drama lies in this <laughs> interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, shit, it was so. Look, that interview, man. How many times you talk to him? What, what do you, what, what's your read on Alex? It's funny because I, I've heard stories and like I know him around Plinio, uh -huh. so I know that he's like the nicest guy. But like, I remember the very first time I interviewed him was in. New York when he was fighting Izzy for the first time in the UFC and it was right after the press conference and he I met him in the hotel lobby and Plinio was dressed up in a jacket and Alex had on like that that leopard sort of jacket that he had mm -hmm. on for that yeah, 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 yeah. and he didn't have a t-shirt on so he was one of the scariest <laughs> fucking human beings I've ever come across like he's got the uh, he's got the tattoos on his hands like the stone the, the stone yeah and like he was standing beside me and I was like holy shit I would never want to fight this it's guy fucking man. crazy right yeah it's crazy he was uh, so I first met him at the at Glover's and it's like really composed like not talking I knew who he was he was not even in the UFC yet I knew the guy, just like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, 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 what's up? Good, what's up? Good, what's up? So, <clears throat> I mean, he was in the UFC. He he didn't have his first fight yet. Yeah. Uzada shows up. It's like everybody's looking around. No one speaks English. They say, hey, uh, Hafa, can you help? I was like, yeah, man, I'll help. So, doing the translation, they he takes uh, Alex to the to the bathroom. 
they go in, I'll stay out right at the door, right? It's like, hey, uh, if you need anything, just say a little loud and, and I'll help. She goes, all right. So I wait, everything goes well. We'll come back and Alex is just quiet. He didn't say a word. It's like 15 minutes later, he goes like, hey, Turman, you see? I, I had to keep holding the door because Rafa wants to get in all the time. <laughs> and he was fucking around. He's like, hey, oh, he want to see my underwear. <laughs> I heard I was like, the man, he was trying to open the door. I was keeping it closed. Yeah. Was other guys walking, like looking? And he didn't understand. I was like, no, 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 calm down. He likes me too much. He's like fucking around. He was so, and right there at that moment, that's when he relaxed around me. You know, and, and, and but he's a very, like he looks and he thinks and it's like oh, what the fuck this guy wants you know he does not open up so he tries did, to get a read on you did you watch his interview with uh hawani no but i heard he was stone-faced the whole he time he was staring at him like uh, with a with a suspicious look and that's my fault i'm gonna say first <laughs> <laughs> so i i like the first thing i want to say is like i like a hawani okay but Saying that, I also think that he uses his platforms to poke the UFC every fucking chance he gets. You I think he's got an agenda? I, 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 100%. 100%. He takes it personal. I don't blame the guy. You know, shit happened. Yeah. But I think in a different way. I think like when you go and say, hey, I'm a journalist, I'm impartial, uh, I don't take sides, you don't do that. Right? It's not us we can take sides sure because we, you know what fuck it yeah you, you know like like tourman is fighting hi, hi. i want tourman to fucking rip both of his legs if we can on the first round yeah. and and then we'll figure out <laughs> yeah. right and then we'll, we'll, we'll and then we'll see what happens after that but yeah. you know so can, can i get a napkin yeah. so uh, a couple of weeks before, a week before that, he had uh, Renato uh, Moicano in it. Okay. And Ariel did. Yeah. Okay. And and he had that. Uh, Renato had a big speech on Madison Square Garden. Remember that he's like, oh, put some respect yeah, 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 on yeah. my name. Yeah. And, and he was not talking the UFC respecting him. In his way of saying, he was saying, I was. Uh, top 15 in the other division and you guys are putting me with these fucking guys here that don't deserve kind of don't deserve to be here with me I'm sure. fucking it all up so show me some respect and give me some tougher fighters that sure. that's what he was saying and uh, and Ariel twisted that and made uh, Moicano said that uh, the UFC was disrespecting him right so, you know you, you know when you interview a Brazilian with some limit English because uh, Moicano speaks great English, but you keep pushing and poking and dancing around him. At some point, he's gonna miss something. He's gonna say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," mm. right? He, he, he's you know just that. Agree, right? he, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and Ar Aria was kind of like, "Yeah, so that disrespect thing, right?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." So do you think that they they should show you some more respect? He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So the UFC is disrespecting you. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So. I to and then Alex told me he was going on Hawani, and then I say, look, just be careful because he's gonna find a way to put you against the wall and say something that's gonna make the UFC look bad. He's gonna do that. He does that to every fucking person he can. So he has his, he has a blast with Luke Hawkhold because those guys just go and fucking say whatever, right? And Alex got really intense with him, just like so, so, so fucking staring at him, and, and he tried. And he tried. He was like, because at that time, the, the thing with Glover just happened. The, the, they changed the fight, and Glover wanted right. to fight uh, Blakovic again, and he'd say no. Uh, so he was like, oh, so what do you think? Do you think it's fair what the, the UFC is doing to Glover? And Alex said something like, uh, that Glover's been in the UFC long, way longer than I am, so I, I'm sure you can figure it out. Yeah. And that was it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, thanks for that, man. Like, you see, you see? I was like, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I saw it, and he does that. And, I, and again, I, I like the guy. I just I just think he does that, and he shouldn't. That's all. Yeah. Not that he doesn't have a reason, but he can say, this is the 
my personal moment here. Then he can do that. Yeah. Right? Because that's how he feels. If he says I'm a journalist and I'm a professional, he shouldn't do that. that that's my point with, with, with journalists. It's not a... You, you cannot put your journalist jacket and use that to fucking twist. Not twist, but you know to make one side look bad and the other side look good. he just can do that yeah we can but we're not professional journalists and 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 and, and that was it but it's but it's funny and alex is an intense guy right what was the most intense fighter like any awkward moments like you say something you're shooting or the guy replies something that you say what the fuck where do i go from here uh, i'm just trying to think because this interviewing thing, it's yeah. kind of new to you too, right? Alex Caceres was a hard guy to interview. Really? Yeah. Because he's very... Was he fucking high when he was talking to you? No, no. Because he, he looks like he's high all the time. He had, he had just knocked out Julian Arosa. And um, you know how he is. He's very spiritual, spiritual mm. guy. And he likes, you know, he also told me he doesn't... He plays video games and... We were we were talking. He smokes a lot of weed, right? Like I think it's public. I, I'm, I, well, allegedly, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to say. I, I, that was the impression I had, like like a Nate Diaz kind of guy. It's like yeah, yeah. Ooh, so kind of we weird. were. If we he doesn't, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. we were backstage uh, after he had just knocked out Julian Arosa, and I was kind of making a relatable. I was trying to make a relatable question because a new season of The Ultimate Fighter was coming out. I think it was when they were kind of like promoting no i think it was when the last season of the ultimate fighter ended and i think it was like when usman muhammad usman was on there um and yes yeah i remember right yeah and juliana miller had won as well and i think i was trying to like compare what these new people coming out of the ultimate fighter were compared to like when he was on the ultimate fighter type something along those lines and he was like Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me, let me stop you right there. He's like, I don't watch fighting. He's like, huh? he's like, I don't watch fighting. He's like, I train, I, I have my fights, but I don't watch anything to do with fighting. So I was like, wow. I was like, damn, okay. So I really had to try to find like, at that point, it just like it doesn't throw you off, but it's like okay, I just gotta completely switch up. What Every, I was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then another guy. <laughs> that's a really intense interview is Dominic Cruz especially on fight week like mm. we interviewed him uh, that week that he fought Cheeto Vera and like uh -huh. same thing he's Dominic Cruz is like bro there's compilations of him on YouTube just roasting people yes like, he is so quick and, and he does it with fucking he's, he's a master at precision it. yes precision so it's like He's a very hard guy to interview yeah. because he's the same way. He's like, if he doesn't know you, you don't know how much of him, how much of him's gonna open up, or what his responses will be, or if he's gonna come, you know, yeah. give you a quick way to answer. I, I passed a fucking. Uh, I had a really. I, I have a friend that's really, really close friends with him. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, you want to have Dominic? Uh, I'll, I'll make it happen. And I was like, I, I don't think I'm ready for Dominic. Yeah. Because you, you gotta be a fucking interviewer. Yeah. To do something like that, and I'm, I'm, I'm 100%. I admit I'm not. Yeah. I'll have a conversation. I'll just talk about nice things. I don't want any fucking, you know, like thing that. You're gonna get so like, oh shit! Why the fuck am I here? You know, like none of that. I remember when. Uh, <coughs> Muhammad beat Zach. No, who did he beat? Muhammad beat uh, Junior Tafa earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Kamaru was backstage, and Stephen got to. Meet. I was there. I was there. I was. The Stephen got to meet Kamaru. Oh. And and uh, Kamaru left, and and Stephen was like, "Yo, what the fuck? Like, I just shook Kamaru Usman's hand. Like, he had, a little, hand. Not, he had a, oh, nice. a little bit of a trippy. Like, a, that's nice. It was one of those moments for him, which is. Cool. Did you have any moment like that? You say, "Holy shit." Anderson Silva. Oh, was it? Yeah, when I met Anderson Silva, uh, when he was fighting Jake Paul, I interviewed him. I was outside just fucking kind of losing it a little bit. You know? Really? Like, shit. Holy shit, you know? I had, I had a few. I had a... Uh, I'm really into uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so I had Bochecha in the car. 
and he was talking and I was like holy shit that's fucking right here. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I was with the guy like all afternoon yeah. I had one with uh, Randy Couture yeah in a car too and he was talking and, and, and he would look he, he was sitting right there and he was looking in my eyes while he was talking and then I'm driving but I want to acknowledge that uh -huh. he's looking at me while he's talking so Every time I looked at him, I was like, holy shit, it's Randy Couture. Yeah. Like, and I told him, I said, look, I'm sorry, I'm having a moment here. It's fucking yeah. Randy Couture. And I was like, yep. it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy. It's like, uh, and, and, and the, the other one, I, I never on, on, on an interview, but it was when I met uh, Hicks and Gracie. Nice. I did a, a, a private uh, jiu-jitsu class with him at his house. He opens the door. He's like, hey, I'm Hickson. I was like, yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so you are. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking funny, man. Yeah. So fucking funny. What's the all the all the links, YouTube and uh, Instagram and everything's gonna be in the in the description here. Yeah, so it's uh, Instagram is at full send underscore MMA. Uh -huh. Same thing on TikTok at full send underscore MMA, and then YouTube you just at full send MMA. Yeah, and 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 guys, check it out. Give some love, and it's it's so hard to take something that's that's done in one way for so long and, and try to twist it in a, in a in a fun way and asking different cool questions and uh, some, sometimes not even the guys are expecting there. I was like, I think you, you asked something to uh, Macy Barber today. She was like, uh, 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 right? It was, you, you know, and like, and there's so much value to, to all of that. I, I, I think we, every time we can support something like that. Are we at 100,000 yet on YouTube? We're at almost 96 so we got like Shit. four four thousand to go the yeah goal is, the goal is to hit a hundred thousand before you know a year's time so i think we're gonna get there you probably get four thousand in a couple of weeks yeah you definitely get it but yeah. in, in a couple of weeks this is gonna be awesome yeah look we are we're doing this just before uh fight night do you have predictions oh man I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like, cause I, I, I know so many fighters now. Like, I can't predict the main event because I'm super close with both guys. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Amanda and, and Mason Barber. If it goes to a decision, Macy Barber will win. Yeah, no shit, right? Because she just seems. She to did San Antonio. Uh, the people, people were saying she lost that fight. Remember the 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 San was it San Antonio? It was, yeah, it was yeah, it was yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I like Phil Rowe to beat Neil Magny. Okay. I yeah, like I can see one. that. Yeah. And what about Tournament Man? Oh man. Terman has a tough fight, man. You think so? He has a tough. Uh, well, it's like it's his debut at 170 pounds, yeah. and he's fighting a veteran, and not only a veteran, but a guy that's like super crafty. And Randy Brown, he throws, he knows how to use his distance perfectly. You going to you uh, you going to your hotel right now? Yes. So where where is it? Uh, you know the address? Give me the address. Um. You want to just type it here? Let me see. Riverfront or Riverwalk. Is it that? Yeah. Hyatt Regency, Jacksonville, Riverfront. Isn't that the hotel we were? Uh, no, we were at South Bank, I think. Er. No, no, no. The, no, the Hyatt, it's we the, were, yeah. that's the, the USC hotel. South Bank hotel. is a, er. South, South Bank? Bank is okay. Yeah. South Bank hotel. <laughs> Hold on. South Bank? Yeah. South Hotel Bank. Prudential Drive? No. Uh, oh, yeah. 151. Yeah, Prudential. okay. Yeah. So keep going with the tournament. So, yeah, Randy Brown is like, he's a crafty veteran at 170 pounds, and he knows how to use his distance, and he throws all these, these wild flying knees and... But that being said, first we gotta see if Terman can make the weight, which sounds like it's gonna be no problem. Sounds like. Sounds he's, like. Uh, it's just even like, it's a little bit scary because he's so relaxed about it. Yeah. And I'm like, 
How's your weight? How's your weight? He's like, hey, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Relax. It's all good. It's like, all right, man. It's like, all right. I'm even going to do a weight cut for him Thursday night. Yeah. So I'll show, like, some, some support. Yeah. You know, just, just, he said, he said he's going to be fine. It's like, all right, I believe it. Jeez. I believe it. So, but I mean, if he can, if he can get Randy Brown down, like, he's, He's got to grapple right away. He can't waste time and fuck around on the feet with him. He's got to he's got to come out as soon as that bell goes or the round starts. He's got to go right for that fucking mm. push him against the fence. Yeah, yeah. I told I, I told him, and that's the fucked up part, right? Like it's because I hate to say things that can plant little seeds on their heads because they're fucking humans, right? Mm -hmm. But I say, look, ideal scenario: Gilbert Burns, New Magni. For sure. It's the same, yep. same fucking fight. Yep. Say that. And he goes like, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I said, oh, thank God. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I said, that's what we want. Get in there. Dump him on his head. That's it. Choke that's him it. out. That's, that's it. That's it. And I saw, I saw many fucking training sessions with uh, Randy Brown and uh, Hansel's. And uh, that's the way. Yeah. That's the way. Who else? Um... Who else? I'm excited to see Trevor Peak fight, man. Trevor, oh, you know who? Trevor Peak's my guy. <laughs> Who's he fighting? He's fighting uh, Chepe. I I only know him as Chepe. Um, he just he coming in on short notice. Chepe Machine Gun is like the guy's nickname. But mm, yeah, I think I I I, I think he comes from LFA. Um, but oh, I, I think I, I think I know who that guy is. I think yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But I I just. I just love Trevor Peak's fighting style. Like the guy is like, he's like killer be killed. You know what I mean? I think all his fights are finishes. He's undefeated and like, he fought Eric Gonzalez and he was the one that was throwing like, I called him like the Donkey Kong hammer fist punches. You know, his <laughs> standing hammer fists and stuff. It was wild. And he and he's just a super nice guy. That too. I think Josh Emmett and Bruno Silva they have their hands fucking full. So, you think Brendan Allen, eh? I think Brendan Allen is a fucking tough fight for Bruno. For Brendan Allen. I, I mean, look a, at what he did to Muniz, right? You know? He's so fucking crafty on, on, on the ground. Too. Is Daniel Gracie on, on uh, Brendan Allen's corner? I don't know. Yeah. There was this whole drama with uh, Pat Sabatini. I had no idea that happened. Uh, the, the, I did my own very superficial research Pat Sabatini just fought mm -hmm. in Vegas and Daniel Grace was not in his corner okay I was like uh that's weird he's so with I, the Philly guys yeah yeah that used to be Daniel Gracie Academy okay Sean Brady yeah. and all, all these guys with Daniel Gracie and uh and then I look at Instagram they're not even following each other anymore Damn. So I was like, ooh, something. I, I, that, that's all I know. But definitely something happened. And I'm wondering if Brendan Allen is coming with, uh, with Daniel or not. Hmm. But, I, but I still, I think that's a tough, tough fight. Yeah. For, so, him, for him to go and submit Muniz, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <clears throat> How was uh, Canada with uh, Charles? Oh, my God. Man. Charles is in a different level, right? It's the amount of fans that guy has. Like, imagine if that guy learns to speak fluent English. Do you know? How, like, uh, you know what I loved? He's trying. Yeah. You know. He'll He's be trying. he'll be fucking even bigger than he already is. Like, people love him and he doesn't speak English. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you would have thought you would have thought he was from Canada. The way that they cheered for him is yeah. like a movie star, man. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Fucking crazy, right? They're going wild. Like, just as wild for him as all the other Canadians yeah. on the card. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy how much people love him. And, and in Brazil, this kid's it's a fucking superstar now. Yeah. He's a superstar. And I think that I if I have to say what hurt him the most for that title fight in uh, in Abu Dhabi against uh, Megachev, that was it. He's so nice to everyone. He tries to attend uh, to to like if you call him three o'clock in the morning, he'll answer and say, hey, can we do an interview, 10 minutes? He's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, and I think that hurt him a lot going to the fight. He, he was the champion, not in paper, right? Because uh, whatever happened, but 
as the champion, he was trying to be like the people's champ, you know, so he was still accessible and, and talking and fucking people calling him for everything and, uh, and he was just wasting so much time trying to please everyone and uh, it didn't it didn't work well for him. He gets into this fight against uh, Darius. He's like a three to one underdog, something like that, right? I think as it closed, he was like one and a half. I think he was like maybe plus 150. Okay, yeah, yeah that's not so bad then. Yeah. But early in, in the week, he he was he was over 200, I think. Oh, wow. And, 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 and like, I'm a fan and I love the guy, but that shit gets you thinking. Of because, course, yeah. Right, I was like, holy shit, what if? You know, it's, ugh. and then he goes and fucking smokes him. Holy, I never seen anyone doing that with Darius. Yeah, never. Yeah, playing like even even in the wrestling and the jujitsu, he was like, you know what, you want to play that game? Okay, yeah. I'll beat you in every aspect of no MMA. Shit. It was unbelievable. No shit, it's crazy. And that that gotta hurt to Darius because they have this little thing going on for years now. I have a, I, I did something with Darius in, uh, I think it was 2019, and he was already in talks about fighting Charles, and the fight wasn't happening because now Charles is a top five, and so he, 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 he already had this bitter thing going on against Charles, and it, got, it has to, uh, that's the most fucking tough job, right, because you get into a beef with the guy, the guy goes there and beats you up in front yeah. of everyone. He's yeah. like, all right, beef is over. And then you got to live with that. No shit, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, you following uh, the Ultimate Fighter? What do you think? I just, I don't know if they... Did you need... interview McGregor yet? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. I just, I think they need to find a new format or just something to spice it up. Because I get it, like, I, I enjoy the fights, but as far as the rest of the series goes, I'm just not, there's nothing interested, nothing interesting's happened to me so far this season. They should just do a fucking fight show. Like, yeah. con like contender <laughs> series? Like, yeah, yeah. But, but you know what, just fucking team up. You got, oh, Team McGregor and this team, so today, and, and, because I, I agree 100%, but this season looks like they're doing a little bit less drama and more fighting yeah. they cut into the fights a lot quicker mm -hmm. right because it turns out that's what the people want to fucking see anyway right but on the other hand it's a bunch of new guys people don't don't really know the guy so how much bang for the buck they're getting that's yeah. the part i don't i don't know if it's more like uh oh we have to do an ultimate fighter because it's it's a proud thing is like it's an honor yeah. thing and and we're just gonna do no matter what because it's 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 been terrible i agree with you yeah i agree with you do you think mcgregor fights this year no as far as i've heard he missed the usada testing pool day but I'm i heard that too but we were having a conversation that we don't really know if he's not in the pool yet that's true yeah right like uh it, where do you check uh, we, we where's your hotel did I just drive by? Uh, yeah, it was back. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Can we get there from here or no? No, I'll turn around. Okay. And um, because I think the last update from Zada was in April. So we don't know if he's there and he just didn't get tested yet. But it's really confused. Yeah. The, it's, it's, it's confusing, the, the whole Zada thing. I was under the impression that he has six months to present two clean tests. And in my head, I thought that, because he watered the pool, right? And he said, hey, I, re I decided to fight again. So I got to rejoin the pool. All right, so you have six months to present two negative tests in sequence. So you're allowed to fight. But I thought he could do like, I don't know, 10 tests, eight positive for whatever shit he was on before he, when he was out of the pool. And then he, he, as his system gets clean, he'll show. And they say, no, if you go in and test positive, you're fucking positive. Damn. So I, I have no idea what to think of this. But what we were looking at is like, 
we don't know for sure if he's in the pool or not. Mm -hmm. Maybe Usada just didn't test him yet. Mm -hmm. You know, the paperwork side maybe is done. Yeah. We, where is the hotel? Uh, Keep going. Yeah, it's right at the red. light. Yeah. But again, I, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna see this guy again. I hate, I hate to say it like that, but I just don't think you're gonna see him again. I mean, I'm not even talking about the shit that happening in Miami because I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's just bullshit. But I just don't think we're gonna, I just don't think it's gonna happen. I, I don't know. If I had that much money, I don't think I'd want to fight again. Either. And I love the guy. I, like, he's so fun to watch, mm -hmm. you know, but I will hate to see get there and just get smoked by everyone too, you know? It's kind of, why? I, I think as Nate Diaz, he managed to, to, to get out of his last fight with, a, with a, like a Joker card, right? Exactly. It's like, hey, yeah. there's room for you to come back. But do you really need to? Yeah. Just like Nate did with uh, Leon Edwards. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. Say, like, hey. You beat me, but you almost he, he manages to get beat for almost five rounds, but he gets one good hand. That's all everybody talks yeah. about. Yeah. Is this right? Yeah. Is right, this right. one? Yeah. That's all everyone talks about. He almost got it. He almost got it. Yeah. So he's there. And, and, and that's good. That's a hook. Mm -hmm. Right, and then he smokes uh, Ferguson. Ferguson yeah. after that, and uh, and it's all good. And Connor getting the leg injury, I think he got a good uh, hook yeah. to come back. Yeah. But do we really want to see him get smoked? It's gonna be so sad, right? Because exactly. you you still see that guy. He's a fucking. He got that that magical thing still around him. I don't want to see that go away like that. Yeah. Just getting beat up. Yeah. Okay, bro. We good? Yeah, man. Always. I'll see you Always. fucking Friday at the wait ins. Yeah, man. Bring your camera, okay? <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> you Look, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and everything. Everything is gonna be on the on the description. What's your Instagram? It is. Beyonce with two C's, 34. Follow you, boy. Is it joking? No, no it's that's my real, because my last name is Yance, so. Okay, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I, I got scared for a second. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, if it wasn't his last name and his Instagram was just Beyonce, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if he'd be working for me. <laughs> no, yeah, sure, right? kind of sucks. Oh, shit. Yeah. You got there, he's like, his, his picture is like this, like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit, man! This was so fun. Thank you yeah. so much, and I'll see you guys soon. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, thank you.